everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I want to do my March reading wrap up and this month was a really good reading month for me uh, in terms of enjoyment. I've read six books in March and all of them were written by women which happened unconsciously but fittingly with Women's History Month. Uh, so yeah, without further, further ado, let's talk about the books that I've read in March. So I will link all of the reviews that I've written for these books. I think all but one I have written full review of. I will start with that book and that is Arsenic for Tea by Robin Stevens which is the second book in the Murder Most Unladylike series. It is a middle grade mystery that I read for middle grade March uh, which was on my TBR and it is essentially following Daisy and Hazel that we are introduced to in the first book. They're uh, away uh, during the vacation at Daisy's house um, and during the time that they spend uh, in the house a murder happens and the interesting thing about this book uh, this mystery is partly the fact that the murder itself is takes place within a closed room setting uh, the locked room scenario which is one of my favorite mystery setups um, so that was fun and also the fact that because the murder takes place within Daisy's home, most of the people that she suspects are people that she's very familiar with in terms of like servants um, and the rest of them are family members, um, a few outsiders. It is quite different for Daisy to investigate the um, the mystery in comparison to the first book uh, where it was mostly she was mostly excited about the the investigation whereas with um, the mystery in Arsenic for Tea she is much more conflicted about uh, the investigation because it's about people she loves. Uh, I think Daisy has to face some challenges that allows her to grow in this book which I really liked. Um, I like Hazel as a counterpoint to Daisy uh, being much more hesitant and um, critical of the things that they do within their investigation but also with other people. The thing that really uh, added to my enjoyment of this that sort of took it to the next level was the solution and um, sort of the way that it tied itself together at the end. Uh, so I would highly recommend this series for any uh, any age actually because I think um, Robin Stevens is really good at telling uh, fun and engaging um, middle grade stories that also they don't feel uh, oversimplified that I feel like a lot of children's books can feel like um, this uh, the both of these books feel entertainment. Uh, entertaining even for an adult reader. Uh, the other middle grade book that I read uh, during the month was The Wizard of Once by Cressida Cowell narrated by David Tennant. Uh, so I didn't realize that this is the Doctor Who actor. Uh, either way it is the story of so there's basically two tribes within this story and this world. Uh, there is the warrior tribe and then there's the wizard tribe and the sort of the, the child of the leaders of both tribes eventually end up meeting through circumstances and at first they're quite, um, there's much conflict between them because the tribes are at war, they don't really uh, interact with each other, uh, so there's a lot of uh, prejudice and uh, hate um, beyond the borders of these two tribes. Uh, but the story is sort of following um, the wizard son, the wizard king's son, uh, Tsar, and the warrior uh, queen's daughter, whose name is escaping me at the moment, um, then meeting and going on adventures together and there's a magical sword and there's uh, evil witches and etc. The overall premise uh, and the outline of this book is fairly s sort of stereotypical. There's a bit of the, the chosen one and the adventures themselves usually have quite clear endings. The fact that both leaders are meeting um, through uh, circumstances and they're both sort of outsiders within their tribes. Um, there's a lot of things in the book that feels quite 
expected and there's nothing really exceptional about the book uh, but the narration is wonderful. Uh, I loved his narration, I loved the accents of all of the characters, uh, especially enjoyed the girl's perspective that is really bad that I can't remember her name. Enjoyed her character much more. She felt much more down to earth as well as a dreamer. Uh, she was excited about the adventures but also afraid and she felt like much more of a balanced and realistic sort of a mess of feelings and emotions and and thoughts whereas Tsar is a typically uh, typical brat basically. He's an insufferable as, as far as characters go and I really didn't like any part of the book that that dealt with him too closely. Uh, so in general I really enjoyed the uh, listening experience of this uh, audiobook but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, if you don't pick up the audiobook. I also uh, read two mysteries for March Mystery Madness and the first one is The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters. I really really enjoyed Sarah Waters writing in this. I felt um, I thought that it was very easy to get stuck into this book which I really enjoyed. Um, this is a uh, historical fiction historical fiction novel that uh, is set in the 1920s and it's about a mother and a daughter who are um, after the First World War they're in financial difficulties and they have to take in lodgers to make enough money to uh, support them and the lodgers that move into the house is a, a woman called Lillian with her husband Leonard. So the book, the first half of the book follows the interactions between these four characters within the household. Um, some of the interactions go beyond the household but that is sort of the main crux of it. Uh, and in particular the relationship between Lillian, the wife of uh, the pair of lodgers, and um, Frances, the daughter of the house owner. Um, at first they're quite interested in each other and then a friendship blooms which quickly turns into something more um, of a more romantic kind. Uh, I loved their uh, their their relationship building. I really enjoyed all of the interactions within the household, all of the various different constellations within the household. So the first half of the book is this romance story with uh, sensual elements to it and desperation and very emotional overall. All of the of the various emotions, both good and bad, and the character portrayals feel very thoroughly. Um, rounded and everything, so I love that. The second half of the book somehow lost me. I felt like I never really settled into it, even though it is 300 pages, the second half of the book and the crime story, uh, both the actual unfolding was kind of interesting, but the consequences of it is so stretched out that I, I really felt uh, like I was starting to feel indifferent about both the characters and the crime itself and what happens to the people involved and somehow I just felt like the two parts never really came together fully. Uh, like if it showed the characters in the first half of the book in, in interesting lights but it was way too long so that I didn't care anymore if I saw more sides to them. But yeah, for me the two parts never really came together and because of that I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book overall um, even though I really enjoyed the first half of it. Um, but I think for me it was interesting as an introduction to Sarah Waters because I really enjoyed her writing in it. The other mystery that I read is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon narrated by uh, Paula Wilcox. So this was a fantastic audiobook first of all and the book itself I also really enjoyed. It's set in the middle of the 1970s in a small British town where a woman disappears and it's unclear whether she left of her own devices or if something happened to her and the uh, two girls within the, the town are sort of investigating what happened to her as well as trying to find God because someone has told them 
that God is everywhere, so they start to physically look for God and um, simultaneously looking for the woman and figuring out what happened to her, uh, which propels the story forward. We're also told that there, that's, we're sort of um, hinted at that something has happened in this town a few years prior that is sort of a dark secret that the town carries. And the dark secret seems somehow linked with the new disappearance. At first, you're almost led to believe that this is a very cozy mystery with uh, a small town and small town and everyone knowing each other and um, sort of uh, an almost idyllic place um, of uh, trust and strong uh, relationships between everyone but the further you get into the book, I felt the more uh, it's clear that Joanna Cannon looks very critically at the small town uh, ideal as a myth and what happens when um, a community is that isolated from other people and from new environments and from someone uh, being able to question what the community sort of takes as gospel reminded me a lot of Shirley Jackson in the way she looks at this kind of community in some of her books like We Have Always Lived in the Castle and the Lottery. Um, both are stories that I love so I really enjoyed that aspect of the ghosts, um, Trouble with Ghosts and Sheep. I think it captures the setting really well, and the warmth of the summer and all of the, all of the sort of texture to the story I really enjoyed. Um, I loved the narration of it. It was fantastic and very easy to, to get into and get comfortable with. Then I read my third historical fiction for the month and that is Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier narrated by Hattie Morahan. This one is set in the beginning of the 19th century and it follows Mary Anning who is a real historical figure. She, she was a fossil hunter and um, it follows her uh, life in a fictionalized sense obviously um, and also her friendship with uh, a young woman called Elizabeth who moves to the Lyme area together with her her sisters when her brother is marrying he sort of sends them off to this other uh, small town um, where they are basically sent to live their the rest of their lives and um, so Elizabeth uh, starts to get to know Mary Anning and a lot of this book is about their friendship um, but it's also about Mary Anning being becoming a fossil hunter and uh, sort of the progression of her career uh, and I found this book again really really enjoyable I loved the um, the narration of it I, I really like the aspect of this sort of the women scientist aspect of the story so uh, both Mary Anning and Elizabeth has a big interest in fossils and they're not really met with um, enthusiasm by people around them because they're women. They're not encouraged to be interested in science uh, or scientific exploration and discovery. Um, so they get a lot of backlash and um, critique by especially the men around them. And it's sort of about both the friendship between these two women building over a long period of time um, and the friendship has uh, a lot of flaws as well, like it's not only a positive thing, uh, which I liked, but it's also about these two women who are really interested in science and trying to make um, space for themselves within a very uh, male-dominated field and how that sh shaped and changed the um, scientific thoughts of the time. Um, so I found Mary Anning's story so fascinating that I am really looking forward to reading some nonfiction about her. Um, and also really enjoyed finally reading Tracy Chevalier because since I've been getting into historical fiction I thought that I would pick up one of the most sort of renowned names within the genre. Uh, so I really enjoyed this one and I'm looking forward to reading more Tracy Chevalier in the future. The last book I finished in the month was the only nonfiction book I've read and that is The Collective Schizophrenia by Esme Wei Young Wang which is an essay collection about the author's experiences of 
schizophrenia. She actually talks about it as a plural um, in terms of how schizophrenia is sort of capturing several different disorders within the larger umbrella term. Um, but this essay collection is cohesive enough to feel almost like a memoir. The essays vary from things like how we talk about mental illness and the way that we understand mental illness in terms of the construction of it, diagnoses, treatment, um, involuntary treatment for example is discussed in this book that I thought was both enlightening and very thought-provoking. Uh, I felt I felt throughout this book that I was uh, that I was given so much uh, useful information and things to think about, which uh, is probably the par part of the reason that I love this one so much. I can't really sum everything up about this in this video, so uh, I will link the review in the description if you're interested in more, but I would highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in schizophrenia specifically or um, mental illness and the the way that we understand it, how we view others with it, um, how identity fits into the mental illness experience, how we treat people with mental illness and how we um, act and behave uh, around mental illness. It's, it's so many things in this book, uh, but I feel like it really it really challenged me to read this. Wang is a fantastic writer and I look forward to reading her fiction book as well. Um, I hope she writes more nonfiction because this was fantastic. So yeah. So that was my uh, March reading. I really enjoyed most of what I read. Let me know if you read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them. Um, I would love to know about it and I hope you're having a fantastic start to your April and I will talk to you soon. Bye!